What's up, teens? Today we're talking medians and centroids of triangles. Uh, if there's a cooler word than centroid in geometry, then I would like to see it. Uh, our learning target today, I can find the median of a triangle, I can find where the centroid of a triangle is, and I can use the centroid measure theorem to solve problems. So we're going to tackle a bunch of things today. It's going to kind of look like the last lesson with uh, altitudes and orthocenters, but it's going to have its own spin on it. Okay, here we go. Definition time. A median of a triangle is a segment from a vertex to the midpoint on the opposite side. So again, keyword here is median. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect a vertex to the midpoint on the opposite side for this triangle. We're going to find all three of them. Uh, as a reminder, the midpoint formula is here. We've learned this previously. Uh, midpoint equals x1 plus x2 divided by 2. That is the x coordinate and the y coordinate is similar. You're going to add the y values together and divide by 2. You're just finding the, uh, the mean of the two values. So if we wanted to find the midpoint between A and B, we would do 7 plus 2 over 2, and we would do 8 plus 1 over 2 to find the midpoint between A and B. This would be uh, 9 over 2, so that's 4 and a half. And uh, 9 over 2, 4 and a half. How fun. Okay. <clears throat> So we are claiming, by using the midpoint formula, the midpoint between A and B with these given coordinates is right in the middle. I know we're not on the Cartesian plane, so you're going to have to trust me that this is where the points are. Um, but this point here, let's call it point F, is at point four and a half, four and a half. <clears throat> okay, let's do the same thing for BC. Uh, we're going to add the X coordinates together, 22 plus 7 is 29 half of 29 is four and a half sorry 14 and a half uh so the midpoint is going to be right in the middle here this one is going to be point d and the x coordinate is 14.5 <clears throat> we're now going to find the y coordinate the average of the the sum of the two y values here the average of the y values a plus one is nine half of that is four and a half and our last one, the middle of A, C, it's going to be here-ish, but we need to find the coordinates. Average of the two X coordinates, 2 plus 22 is 24. Half of that is 12. Uh, so this one I'm going to call point E, X coordinate of 12. And then the Y coordinate, uh, 1 plus 1 is 2. Half of that is 1. So that makes sense that the y coordinates are the same here because uh, these two points are the same height, A and C. They're on a horizontal line, so the midpoint must be on that same horizontal line. Okay, we found our three midpoints of all three sides. Now to find our medians, um, it's as simple as connecting the dots. So median A, D looks like that. <clears throat> median B, E here, and median C, F. Uh, I'm going to draw it for this direction. There we go. We have three medians. Again, they all have a point of concurrency. They all meet at the same point. Uh, in this case, I'll call it G. And this point of concurrency, this point G, we call the centroid. So it's very, very similar to how we found altitudes in the previous lesson. But instead of connecting to the opposite side um, at a 90 degree angle, this time we're just connecting the dots at any angle um, but we have to connect it exactly to the midpoint of the opposite side. Okay, team, here's our big hefty example like we did with altitudes and orthocenters. So our task here, find the centroid of triangle A, B, C, where A is at the point 0, negative 4, B is at the point 1, 1, and C is at the point negative 2, comma, 6. So I've laid out three of the steps. First, we're going to find the three midpoints of all three sides. Next, we're going to find the slope of each of the medians. Third, we're going to find the equations of each of the medians. And then the fourth step, I couldn't fit it on the board this time, but we're going to solve that system of equations. So very similar to our last lesson, but this one does move a little bit quicker. So first, find the three midpoints. The midpoint formula, I've listed it here as a reference. You're going to add the x values together, the x coordinates, divide by 2. So first, I'm going to find the, uh, the midpoint of a, b. So a and b. If I add the x coordinates together, I get 1. If I divide one in half, I get one half. So the x coordinates here is one half. 
And the y coordinate is the same thing, but with the y's. Negative four plus one is negative three. Half of negative three is negative three over two. Boom, there is the midpoint there. BC, find uh, the, mi the middle x coordinates. Um, one minus two is negative one. Half of that is negative one half. Now the y coordinate, one plus six is seven. Half of that is three and a half. These are, I know they're fractiony, it's kind of annoying, but it'll, it'll all work out. AC, same thing, zero plus negative two, that's negative two, half of that is negative one. And then the y coordinate, negative four plus six is positive two, half of that is positive one. If you struggle with moving quickly on those, please go review the midpoint formula. Uh, there's videos for it and everything uh, in our Google Classroom. Okay, step two, find the slope of each of these medians. Um, again, we're gonna use a formula and I'm gonna move through it pretty quickly. I'm using the slope formula here. If you're struggling to, to keep up, there's a whole video for slope formula. Okay, A, E. So this is the point, uh, or the, the median that goes through point A and goes through the midpoint of B, C. So um, I should I should label these here. So I'm gonna do that. Okay, I've labeled these three points, sorry for that hiccup. Uh, the midpoint of A, B, I've labeled point D, the midpoint of B, C, I've labeled point E, and the midpoint of A, C, I've labeled point F. I didn't change the values, none of the coordinates are different, I just gave them names. That makes these names make more sense. So if I want to find, uh, I know that the median AE, so it goes from point A to point E, which is the midpoint on the opposite side. We now need to use the slope formula to figure out more what the slope of this line is. So the slope formula, is delta Y over delta X or Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Um, the hardest part here is just keeping all the pieces in the right order. Uh, the math itself, the subtraction is not challenging. Um, it's just keeping things organized. So point A, I'm going to call my x1, y1. Point E, I'm going to call my x2, y2. So on top, I'm going to have three and a half minus negative uh, four. And on the bottom, we're going to have negative one half minus zero. Gross. Okay. So uh, three and a half minus negative four turns into an addition problem. So on top, I'm gonna have seven and a half, and on the bottom, I'm gonna have negative one half. Okay, so now we're dividing fractions. Seven and a half divided by negative one half. This is where you, uh, what is it, keep, change, flip, or however they, however they show it. Uh, basically, we take the, we find, we multiply by the reciprocal of the bottom, and what we end up here uh, is negative 15. So the slope of AE, is negative 15. Okay, BF. So this is, B is point one, one. F is this point, negative one, one. Um, let's call B our x1, y1, and F our x2, y2. So on top here, we're gonna have one minus one. That's our two y values. And on the bottom, we're gonna have negative one minus one getting zero over negative two, which of course is zero. Slope of zero there. Okay, CD. From point C to point D. Um, again, fractions, we just need to be careful here. So I'm gonna do the negative three halves, which is negative one and a half, minus six. From that, I get negative seven and a half. So minus one and a half, Negative one and a half minus six is negative seven and a half. And then I have one half minus negative two. So positive one half minus negative two is two and a half. For this one, we can do some complicated uh, fraction multiplication division, or you can throw in your calculator. Either way, you'll get negative three. So that is our, those are our three slopes of our three medians, A, E, B, F, C, D. Woo, okay. Next, equations of each median. We're gonna throw them into point slope form. This part is, there's no real math happening here. We're not gonna do any calculating. 
Um, it's just plugging pieces in the right spots. We have each of our slopes, boom, boom, and boom. Um, we have each of our points, boom, boom, and boom. So let's carefully plug in the pieces. Y minus Y1. So this is AE. We're utilizing the vertex A, which is at 0, negative 4. The Y coordinate is negative 4, so we're going to have Y plus 4 equals this slope times X minus 0. And we can simplify this thing. Y plus 4 equals negative 15X. Take it one step further, subtract 4 from both sides. Y equals negative 15X minus 4. So here is our first equation. Next equation, BS. Going through the point B, the vertex B, with a slope of 0. So Y minus 1 equals m, which is 0, times x minus 1. Again, simplifying this, y minus 1 equals 0 times stuff is just 0, so y equals 1. I like that equation quite a bit. CD, our final equation that we need to develop, has a slope of negative 3. can't really see that negative. It is indeed negative. And it goes through point C, negative 2, 6. So y minus 6 equals m, which is negative 3, times x minus, so minus negative 2, so x plus 2. Again, simplify it. Um, negative 3x minus 6y equals, I'm going to add 6 to both sides, negative 3x. Uh, if I add 6 to that, it goes away, so it just turns into 0. Here are our three equations. Okay. So now we have our system of equations. It's these three in boxes. We need to uh, solve one of them for one of the variables, get a numerical answer, and then substitute that in any of the other ones. We have kind of a cool thing going on. We already have an equation that's solved for a number. There's no x's there. That is the y-coordinate of our centroid. Pretty cool. So I am have some space here. This is where we're going to record our final answer. Centroid is at the point something comma 1. The reason we know this comma 1 is because y equals 1. That is an equation that we have figured out. That's the equation of the line uh, that goes, that's our median here, bs. Now with that one, we can just plug it into one of the other equations and uh, simplify. So if y equals 1, we could plug it into the top equation or the bottom equation. I think the bottom one looks a little simpler. So uh, we can set that up. I'm just going to take this, substitute 1 in for y, use this space here. So we have 1 equals negative 3x. Again, the reason I put 1 here is because y equals 1. Uh, but we want to solve this thing for x. So when we do that, we'll divide both sides by negative 3. x equals negative 1 third. We'll take this. This is our x-coordinate of the centroid. Here's our final answer. The centroid is at the point negative one-third, one. Okay, pretty cool. Hey, stay tuned. We have one more thing I want to show you. Okay, I do have one more thing to tell you about centroids after this, but I want to make sure this makes sense. So I pulled up these moves. This is the exact same example we just did, I'm trying to make a visual uh, of what, what happened here. So uh, what I did is I plotted the three original points. This is our A, this is our B, this is our C. That's the stuff that was given to us. We then found the three midpoints. Uh, we found point D was at one half, negative three halves. So when I uh, show this, it should, be, uh, it should be one of our midpoints here between A and B. And here it is, we can see the point. It's right here between A and B. I'm sorry, this is annoying. It's, it's hard to see what's going on without the, the, the lines of the triangles. I wasn't able to figure that piece out. Okay, and then here are the other two midpoints. We can see that F is between C and A, and E is right here between C and B. Okay, so we found that stuff. We then found the equations of each of these lines, um, and so I'm gonna plug those in. Uh, these are the exact same things we had earlier. When I click on this one, my hope is that it goes through one of the vertexes and its opposite midpoint. So here it is. It goes through A, 
and it goes through point E, that's the opposite midpoint. This next one uh, should go through vertex B and its opposite midpoint F. Boom, it does. And the third one should go through D and C. D and C, awesome. So it goes through all three, and they all happen to meet at the same point. There's a point of concurrency, and uh, if we did our math correctly, it's at the point negative one-third comma one. And so when I show that, boom, it's exactly where it is. That is our centroid right here at negative three, one. Uh, hopefully looking at this helped shed a little bit of light on what's going on. Uh, but I, I do still have one more thing I want to show you. It's, it's a theorem, um, and it's uh, going to be a nice uh, shortcut for us as we solve some problems. Okay, I'm going to run through this last theorem super quick. There's more details in the notes. So this is called the centroid measure theorem, and here's what it boils down to. When you have a centroid located in, in a triangle, um, the distance between the centroid and the midpoint is half the distance from the centroid to the opposite vertex. So practically speaking, for this example, AG is this distance here. It is twice the distance of DG. So if DG, um, say, say that you were given this, DG equals five, uh, five centimeters, because it's length. Uh, if, if you were given that this is five and you were asked to find AG, well, you would just double it. And you could safely say that AG equals 10 centimeters. And if you were asked to find A D, well, then you would just find the sum of those two things. It'd be 10 plus 5, so the length of A D equals 15 centimeters. Sometimes you'll be asked to do questions like this out, uh, with some like algebraic expressions. There'll be some x's and whatnot. I have a few more examples in my notes, but that's uh, that's it for this video because I'm already on way too long. All right, let me know if you have questions. I believe in you.